Hi, I'm Glyn. I'm from Cambridge. I'm a PhD student here in Aberdeen. I work in Professor Bettina Platt's group in Alzheimer's disease research. Well, for many reasons, primarily it had the funding, the infrastructure, the facilities and the surroundings which have enabled me to actually carry out my research in the first place. But on top of that, I've had the opportunity to expand my research as time has gone on and I've progressed through my PhD. My research is two-pronged. So I look at the progression of Alzheimer's disease using specialised technology like MRI and PET scanning and that allows me to model Alzheimer's disease within a brain over time. But at the same time I look at the molecular side of things and I'm looking at the progression and the initiation of Alzheimer's disease. And we're looking at a particular molecule known as A-beta which is kind of accepted as the cornerstone of Alzheimer's progression. And that's my main focus on the molecular front. Yes, because of the level of funding which our group and indeed the rest of the institute receives, I've been very lucky and I've had the opportunity to contribute and to collaborate with the John Mallard Pet Centre and also use a recently refitted MRI which only a few groups within the institute have been able to use. And then I've also been able to collaborate with other groups which has allowed me access to specialised equipment which normally I wouldn't have been able to use. So due to all of this I've been able to carry out a lot of research which I wouldn't have been able to carry out. I've received a lot of support and I'm in the rare situ situation where I have four supervisors. I have a physicist, a chemist and two biologists. My physicist, Dr Hugh Seaton, works in the biophysics department and overviews preclinical MRI and all our associated activities. My second supervisor, Professor Andy Walsh, works over at the John, John Mallard Pet Centre and overviews all of the PET scanning and data analysis. I've also got Professor Gernot Riedel, who's a specialist in behaviour and neurodegenerative diseases. And I've also got my main supervisor, Professor Bettina Platt, who manages my research but also works in lots of areas within Alzheimer's disease research. And on top of all of this, I have been very lucky in that I have a postdoc, Dr. David Koss, who spared an awful lot of time and effort helping to get my project up and running and helping me to overcome dead ends which are inevitable within research. So in a nutshell, I've been really lucky with the support I have. That's really hard to choose just one. So recently I've had the opportunity to go to the AAIC, which is a massive research AGM, a big meeting in Copenhagen this year, and you get to interact with other scientists who are working specifically in my field, and you can see what other people are doing in their labs. As well, I've also been able to network with the Alzheimer's Research UK, which is basically a platform which can bring my science to public engagement and helps me to connect what I'm doing with knowledge progression and what's happening all over the world including treatment progression. For me, I would definitely say do it. I've had a really nice situation, I've had an awful lot of support from my supervisors, help in my lab, and I've got a very comfortable living environment. And that's all gelled together to make my research progress much more smoothly, which is very difficult. A PhD is a big step. But with all of these, it's managed to make my work come forward and work very well.